we're glad to be sharing the ministry of Redemption Church with you. Now join us as we receive the Word of God. Welcome to, what church is this called? Redemption. Redemption Church. We're very glad to have you with us. If you're receiving this message in person or you are receiving this message online, we greet you. Uh, we're so glad that there are people online checking us out. Talk to people on the interweb all the time. They call us, they text us, they leave messages on YouTube, all of that. We're so thankful to have uh, a relationship with them and to be sharing Jesus with the rest of the world. We want you to know that whether you're in this room or not, God has amazing desires for you. Amen. We believe that wherever you are, wherever you are, uh, we're in our unexpected series. Jesus is unexpected. Do you agree with that sentence? Yeah, Jesus is unexpected. Uh, his message is unexpected. Some of the things he says just flips people out. They were not expecting that. Uh, his power is unexpected. Several times in scripture, they're like, who is this? Is this not the carpenter's son? And yet he's doing all these things. Who is this guy? He's this Galilean. Who is this dude? He, his power is unexpected. What he does in our lives is unexpected. Has God ever like done something in your heart, something in your life that you just, you didn't see that coming. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. Absolutely. Let me tell you, God does that. Yeah. God gives you things you don't even deserve. There were times in my life I thought I would never get married. I just, I really, I was disillusioned by marriage. I saw some hurt marriages up close and it was nasty and you know what the Lord just unexpectedly he brought me somebody he healed hurts in my heart God is he's unexpected yeah. all right that was for somebody there uh, his forgiveness his love is unexpected about the worst thing you can do around Jesus is to sit back and act like you know exactly what he's gonna do or for you to sit back and say oh I know what he's about to say or for you to think you know how he's going to do the thing he's going to do. You are, it's, it's a bad mistake to sit back and think you have Jesus all figured out. Let me tell you, you've come into church today, but this pastor has not figured out Jesus yet. Is that okay to say? That we don't know everything about him. We, we've only heard whispers of his power. Job says, if we've only heard whispers of his power, how could we comprehend the thunderings of his power. He's unexpected. There's so much more about him to learn. And I hope we learn something today. Don't come into this house today. And think you have it all figured out. Be open to the possibility. Of the unexpected. Look at somebody and say. Before he could. Speaking about Jesus. Look at somebody. Sammy. Sammy. Turn to your mom. Go ahead and say it. Everyone say it. Sammy. Before he could. Everyone say it. Before he could be lowered into, into the darkness of hell. Before he could be buried in a lonely, forgotten tomb. Before he could breathe up his last. Before he could take on the sin of all humanity. Humanity, and pause for a second. You know, when we usually think about the punishment and pain of Jesus... We often overlook the absolute sheer horror and pain that he took on all the sin of humanity. Before he carried the cross to Calvary, before he was stabbed into the side, before he wore a crown of thorns, before he had his hands and his feet nailed to the cross, before people mocked him, spat at him, and lied upon him, before he was beaten by Roman soldiers with a cat of nine tails whip peeling off his skin, before he was given three different fraudulent trials where no one spoke on his defense, before he received a kiss from a traitor named Judas, before he was sold out for 30 pieces of silver, before he sweated blood under the strain of praying about the oncoming cup of sin, only to bow his will to the Father, before all his disciples... 
fell asleep, leaving him isolated in the moment of his greatest need. Before he offered his body the bread and his blood the wine, before he had one final meal with his beloved disciples, one final opportunity in the flesh to share his love with them. Before any of that could begin, something halted the proceedings. Because we know all that stuff's important, right? Something stopped everything dead in its tracks. Something, we can't move on until something is fixed. Because something was left undone. We're going to read about it in John chapter 13, verse 1. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he, not, he now showed them the full extent of his love. Verse 2, the evening meal was being served. Verse 3, so he got up from the meal, took out his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He said, So church, do we understand what Jesus did here? With so much that needed to be done, right? About 80, 90% of our worship songs are about what's about to come in this story. The cross, the work of salvation, loving us, dying, buried, raising again. All the proceedings had to stop right now at this moment to take care of something left undone. Feet washing. You're like, what What did I just walk in today? We're talking about feet washing. Yeah, we're talking about washing yo feet. Feet washing, it's a necessary function in the ancient world. They walked on dusty, dirty, manure-filled streets. Gross, gross stuff. And when coming into a house, they would surely provide a place in every house for someone to clean their feet. And when coming into a very special occasion, especially when you are the guest of honor and people have worked to put this place together in this time together, you would not only provide a place for them to wash their feet, but you'd probably provide a servant to wash their feet For them. There is a spiritual aspect to this foot washing, but sometimes we get over spiritual on stuff. Can we just say, hey, there is a physical, very earthly, everyday aspect, a physical function to this washing of the feet. It's a common courtesy, it's a common kindness, it's a common service. Do we understand what Jesus was doing? Right here. And do we understand that this is actually Jesus' last meal with his disciples before he takes on the hardest thing ever? You get that picture? Do you realize how much this meal meant to him? He tells us in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 when the hour came, Jesus. And his apostles reclined at the table. You see over here, we got a picture of the Last Supper, this mural over here. And they're all standing. Actually, in Middle Eastern uh, culture, they would lay down on their side. And they would actually be at the level of the table, lay down on their side. So they're like kicking back at the table. They reclined at the table, verse 15. And he said to them, he says these words, look at it. I have eagerly desire to eat this Passover with you before I die. This was a moment Jesus had thought about. This was a moment. This is not like, well, now we'll do this, and then what, you want to go see a movie later. No, this was the thing right here. This was the celebration that he held 
near in his heart. He eagerly desired this moment with them. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. So when we say it's his last supper, we mean it's his last supper until we are in the kingdom reign with Jesus. Jesus had sent Peter and John. Everybody said Peter and John. He sent Peter and John to take care of the preparations for this special meal. And they had the location. And they had the food, the meal. All of that was prepared. This should have been a party-like celebration. Especially since everybody in Jerusalem is going crazy about Jesus. We just had the whole palms being thrown down and everyone crying, Hosanna. This should have been just an absolute party celebration. Oh man, we, it, probably tomorrow this guy's going to be crowned king of this great nation of ours. Let's celebrate. Yet, there's a problem here. The guest of honor had to stop the meal. He's in the middle of the party. He's in the middle of the celebration. He stops the meal and he has to take care of a glaring oversight. The disciples had, prom- had provided everything for a last supper except an important ingredient. They lacked service. They lacked service. It was never in their thought process to serve the Lord by washing his feet much less to wash each other's feet. Instead, their thought process was on what? This was what their process was on. They were like, who's going to sit closest to the Lord? Who is greatest in the kingdom? Matthew 20, there was an awkward discussion of who would sit on Jesus' left and right. You know this story? What was really awkward about it? Because it was the disciples' mom. (laughs) How awkward is that? James and John's mom, the mom of the sons of Zebedee, (laughs) right? She comes to him and says, Jesus, you know those boys of mine, they're pretty good boys. I think one of them should sit on your right, one of them should sit on your left. Awkward. That's an awkward moment. But it shows you what they're all thinking about, what they're all talking about, what they're all expecting. Jesus, I want you to promote My boys, Jesus, I want you to promote me as you come into your kingdom. In Luke 22, 24, the exact context is the Last Supper. And it says this, also a dispute arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Do you get the picture here? You get that this is the moment that he eagerly desired to be with his disciples. And all they could think about was themselves. Could they have been so preoccupied on self-service promotion that they forgot to actually serve the master to serve their brothers? It is in this atmosphere that Jesus gets up. He takes off his outer clothing. He ties a cloth around his waist. And he makes a makeshift apron. And he gets down on the ground and begins to wash feet. This was unexpected. Do do you agree? Given the context of this whole situation, this is kind of... More than unexpected, it's kind of disappointing. It's kind of like, where are these disciples at? What are they thinking? Being in his presence and arguing. Being in his presence, arguing on who's going to sit at his feet when no one has even given him the common courtesy of washing his feet. It's unexpected. You see, they were positioning themselves to be the right-hand man of Jesus, the right-hand man of the king of Israel. And while they were positioning themselves, Jesus was actually positioning himself at their feet. Jesus is an unexpected servant. Say unexpected servant. Oh, good. It was getting quiet in here. I was worried. 
Think of all the wonderful titles we sing about Jesus in worship. Somebody just shout out some titles we sing about Jesus. Emmanuel. King of Kings, Emmanuel, God with us. What else? Lord of Lords, Prince of Peace, Man of Sorrows, Son of God, Son of Man. What else? He's got the name above all names. The Redeemer, the Savior, my healer. We sang most of these things just today. Now, can you think of a song that rejoices over this title? Foot Washer. It makes me want to write that song, Rick. Would you sing it? Would you sing that one? I have to tell you, I think most churches would go, Hate this song. Foot washer. I can't think of one. I can't think of one that even comes close. In fact, I tried to take a time to really think about some modern worship songs that talk about Jesus being a servant to us. Loving us in this way. It's hard to think of that. We're so focused on how he's the king and we're close to him. We aren't very different from these disciples, are we? He's the king, and we're his right-hand people. He loves us. Remember that Jesus stopped the very important proceedings. Are those proceedings important? Sure, you bet they are. But he stopped it. He would not move past this moment when he saw something so important being left undone, before he could go to the cross, before he could purchase and redeem us from sin, before all the important, necessary things he would accomplish, it was necessary for him to take on the form of a servant. A lot of people know Isaiah chapter 53. It is a messianic chapter. If you read this chapter, you can't help but understand they are talking about Jesus Thousands of years before he walked the earth. In fact, they have removed that chapter from the synagogue readings in Jewish temples. Because they, they would read Isaiah chapter 53 and people would get mad and they'd walk up to the rabbi and they'd say, Why are we reading scriptures about Jesus? And there's totes awkward because they'd have to say, We don't believe that's about Jesus. But everyone, when they read it, understands it's about Jesus. Well, if you will back up a few verses to the end of Isaiah chapter 52, it's a connected to this whole prophecy, and it declares that the one coming, that the Messiah, he is a servant, a suffering servant. And it's, it's really amazing. Israel missed the suffering servant because they were looking for the coming king. But if we're not careful, we do the same thing. We always talk about the coming king, but we do not worship the suffering servant. We do not allow him to really cleanse us and really wash us. And we don't allow him to teach us how to do that to his body, the church. We too want to be at the right hand of Jesus. Do you want to be at the right hand of Jesus? If you say you don't, wake up. You ought to want that. It's not wrong to want that. It's not wrong to say, God, I want more of your power, more of your glory, more of what you have for me. I want to be somebody you turn to and trust in. I want to be that person. We want to see Jesus do amazing things in our life. But can I tell you, before he will, look at somebody say, before he will. Could it be that before he will answer some of your prayers, before he will transform your church, before he will bring revival to your city, to your nation, before he will heal your physical, emotional, and spiritual scars? Could it be that before he will bless your family and your personal life? Could it be that before he will use you like you are desiring him to use you? Could it be... Before any of this should begin, something is halting the proceedings. Could it be that something is left undone in your life and he's like, whoa, 
There's so much more I want to do, but we got to take care of this right here before we can move on. Maybe we are missing a necessary ingredient. John chapter 13, verse 14. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. So Jesus has set us up an amazing example. And then he proclaims this. If you do as I have done, now that you know these things, and if you do them, you're going to be what? Blessed. Say it louder. You're going to be what? Blessed. My gosh, do you realize that every like pastor evangelist on TV says, you're going to be blessed <laughs> if you buy me a car. <laughs> right? You're going to be blessed if you sow the seed offering. Now, God blesses giving. He blesses that all day long. But let me tell you, this doesn't get preached much. If you will take on the form of a servant, if you get down on your hands and feet like I have, if you will stop the proceedings and serve, you're going to be blessed. So i got a question for you as I'm drawing to a close today. Are we servants? Are we servants? Is that us? Can I tell you that churches, let me just speak to Redemption Church. Redemption Church, churches should be servants in their communities. When people in a community say, we got this problem, what are we going to do about the problem? It shouldn't be the church like saying, what is the government going to do? No, it's biblical for the church to stand up and solve the problem. In the book of Acts, the people were going hungry. They had widows and orphans going hungry. So what did the church do? Did the church write a nasty uh, email to the senator of Rome, to the governor, and say, hey, you need to take care of these people? No, they bought food, they prepared food, they served food. That should be the church today. Servant to our community. The church should be taking care of those in need, especially widows and orphans. James tells us that that is pure religion. James chapter 1, verse 27. Christians should actually do things for other people. Christians should actually do things for other people. Christians should worship. Christians should sing. Christians should pray. Christians should come to church. Christians should read their Bibles. But Christians should also open up their wallet to a homeless man. Christians should also see someone living next door that's sad and say, I think I'll go talk to them. Christians should actually do something when they see the world messed up like it is. Are we servants? Is that us? When was the last time we put on an apron? When was the last time we took out took off our outer garments? When was the last time we held hands with someone that was sick in a hospital? When was the last time we held hands with someone in a nursing home? When was the last time we stopped the proceedings of our day and made made service a priority? Don't you realize 90 Nine percent of our excuse on not on why not to help somebody is we're just busy. Oh, I've done it so many times driving down the road, man. That person, all by themselves, their car's broken down. Oh man, I'd love to stop them, but I've got a ready-made excuse. I'm running late. Gosh, we got stuff to do. I get it, but don't you realize that? Service ought to stop the proceedings of your day. 
that you are leaving something undone if you haven't served. If you have checked everything off your to-do list, I went to work, I went home, I kissed the wife, went to bed, oh, what a great day. You didn't serve anybody but yourself. You left something undone on this day. Maybe we don't understand what Jesus was trying to show us when he washed feet. Maybe we don't understand service. If this is true then we should spend some time asking him to reveal this truth to us. Maybe we should spend some time letting Jesus serve us today. Maybe we should spend some time letting Jesus show us service by allowing one of our brothers or sisters to serve us. You see, there's some people that need to be served but they have never opened up and allowed someone else to serve them. There's someone today, this is not me flowing in prophetic stuff. This is like common sense. I know people. Here it is, people come into church and they are sad and they're depressed and they're hurting and they're crying inside and they've got a bad doctor's report that they haven't told anybody about. They're worried about their marriage. They come in with all that stuff and they smile and they nod and they don't tell anybody about it. How do you expect your brother and sister to serve you if you don't open up your heart? And trust. I tell you what. I remember one time I was going through like. <laughs> here, we'll be totally transparent with you. It's like here's one call. Hey Chris. You're the pastor of Redemption Church. Oh wow that's a huge responsibility. God. Well thank you for calling. God thank you Lord. Uh, just Lord I hope you're with me. <laughs> and I will. Uh, what, what phone's ringing? Oh hi. Oh you're leaving the church. Oh Okay. It's one third of our budget. Like that, that moment. That happened. The, the phone rung a third time though. And it, when it rung, it was my cousin who believes in Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit. And when I saw it was him, what do you think I did? Oh man, I'm doing okay. You know, everything's going all right. No, I answered the phone like this. Pray for me right now. I'm hurting and I'm scared and I don't know what's going on. Would you just right where you are, you're calling me because you're my brother in the Lord. Would you pray for me? No shame in that. No shame in that. Absolutely no shame. And I felt Jesus come right there. In the moment, it would have been really missing it had I put on a happy face like everything's going well and not everything falling apart. You got dirty feet that need clean, Chris Fluitt. Jesus is our unexpected servant, and you are called to be unexpected servants as well. Are there any unexpected servants today? Is there anybody that would be willing to serve someone, to serve the Lord? Now, this is unexpected. But it is the example the Lord has prepared for us. Marshall, if you could get a chair. I'm going to put it right here, facing right here. And we're just going to do a foot washing right here. Anybody that wants to have their foot washed, you can come have it washed. We're going to set up another one right here. If you want to wash somebody's feet or have someone else wash your feet, you go right there. We're going to do that. I want to remind you that... That foot washing, it's a spiritual thing, but it's also a functional thing. You need to find functional ways. You shouldn't wash somebody's feet today and say, oh, I did something really functional and really to help somebody's life. No, this is like a spiritual bowing of your heart, and you need to be, as you're doing this, asking Jesus, God, you show me how to care for somebody. You show me how to serve somebody, and God, you lead me out of these doors today and let me have the same heart, let me have the same willingness to bow my knees, my knees in in service. There are three things we do every time we come to redemption. Number one is everybody worships. We've done that. Number two is everybody receives the word of God. We opened up the word of God. We looked right into the face of Jesus and we saw him exactly how he is and how he wants us to be. Number three is this. We want you to talk to God. 
these altars are open. You can stay right where you are if you want, or if you want to fill this altar, this area right here, why don't you come pray? If you want special prayer, why don't you come get your feet washed today? We'll, I'm, we're going to pray over you, whatever it is that you need. We're going to pray that God provides what you need. These altars are open. These chairs are open for service right now in Jesus' name. Father. For more information about redemption, look us up online at redemption-church.com. We want to hear from you, so be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, or even our anonymous question text line at 214-856-0550. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed day.